Shay Ray Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and this is episode two. So it's been about uh, two weeks since I did the first podcast and it is Monday morning. It's the 3rd of April and it's really overcast outside today so I've had to put the room light on and um, I don't know how well the lighting, how good the lighting is in here today. So yeah, we'll just get on with it and I hope my camera doesn't die halfway through because I had to charge it just before. But basically I'll just jump straight into it. Um, so for, <clears throat> I should say thank you for those who watched the first episode and subscribed. I really appreciate that and the nice comments that I got. Um, so my name is Taylor and this is my podcast and I'll put my details on the screen below and anything that I talk about today I will put links to in the description box. I find that if I'm watching a podcast or a video or something I like to actually, if somebody's talking about something I kind of pause it and then I'll go off and look at whatever that is so if the link is right down below it's just easy to click on it and you can go to whatever it is that I've spoken about. So today I'm drinking McDonald's coffee, it's a latte. It's good, I like it. Um, and I think I'll just get straight into it. So finished objects this week. I wish I had knitting to show I didn't have that last week either. But I have another project bag, again, another one. This one's a big one. You can see this one. And I've done a pink zip on this one. So all of these bags that I've made, they're all the same fabric because I like to use up every little piece and I don't like to waste anything. But the way I differentiate what's in each bag, I've just changed the color of the zips and then I just pick up the one that I'm after because I know what's inside it. So this one is more of like, maybe like for blankets or larger projects. And I've just got the cat blanket that I'm working on inside there. And there's heaps of room still left in here. So I'm really happy with that. I really like making my own bags. It's really easy to do and really cost effective as well. Um, so yeah, I thought I would uh, go on to a segment that I think I'm going to call Wimwo. And that's what I'm working on. Yeah, what I'm working on. Maybe I need to work on that, I don't know. Um, so last week I showed you a sock. My first sock that I was working on and it was on the 9 inch circular needles. So I've pretty much done the whole, the whole sock. But I hate it. It's so awful. Um, and the reason I hate it, I've tried it on and it's so, it's really holy and I think it's got a lot to do with the yarn that I'm using. Being a beginner, I didn't know what to get and I just got uh, a three ply yarn, which it, I mean, maybe that's suitable, I'm not sure, but it's just really holy and especially around the heel. And I really like the heel, I, I like the way it looks, but when you try it on it's it's just all like holy and I don't really like it so I'm literally at the point where I need to do the decreases for the um, for the toe but I just I don't even really want to finish it <laughs> I don't know if I will I might just scrap that one um, but I started on another sock the other day for my partner Bryce and I'm really enjoying this. So I'm doing Magic Loop. So I did Toe Up and I did the Fish Slips this heel because I've heard everyone talking about it. So I bought the pattern for a dollar and I'm actually proud of myself because I was able to follow it and actually, you know, produce the heel, which I was really surprised that I could actually do. And I really like Magic Loop. I find that's really simple and easy to do. But getting started on Magic Loop, 
it took a bit for my brain to kind of compute how this is actually going to work. And there's quite a few tutorials out there, but the only one that made sense to me is by Happy Knits. And I'll put the tutorial link below. And her tutorial is actually for two at a time socks, but I just thought two at a time I'll get confused, so I'll just do one at a time. And it starts off with a Turkish cast on, which I really like. I found that pretty easy to do. And yeah, I'll have to admit that I only, that tutorial, I only watched the cast on and increasing for the toe. And then I basically just knit the foot. And this is the um, cardboard cutout thing that the um, fish lips kiss heel pattern calls for you to make. So you knit up until this line here and then you start to do follow the pattern for the toe. But I there are mistakes on this and I'm not too worried about that. It's all just practice. But I really when I when I initially saw this heel on podcasts and things like that, I thought this is like the weirdest looking thing ever. But I actually think it's quite cool and I like how it it um, folds down flat. And I'm, I'm going to finish these tonight. I'm just going to uh, knit up a few more inches and then do the cuff. And I want to try them on because I want to see what this actually feels like, even though it's going to be too big for me. But yeah, I just want to see what it feels like. And then I can start knitting my own socks in it. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is um, a Peyton's yarn. I don't think I have... Yeah, I don't have the little tag anymore, but it's like baby yarn, that's what it is, it's a four ply. But I just bought that because I liked the colour and it was inexpensive to start off on. Oh, and the uh, needles that I'm using are just cheap ones from Spotlight. Oh, they're really awful, just mainly just the cord because it's so stiff and it has kinks in it and it doesn't really do what you want it to do and the join the um it's quite hard to get the stitches if you do it a bit tight when you're turning it and just to get them over that but I did purchase um some Addy sock lockets through the week so when I cast on my socks, I'm going to knit them on these ones, and these feel really nice, so I'm excited about that, to use those. Um, so what else do I have to talk about? So the next, that's basically it for what I'm working on, I wish I had more to show you, but I don't. Um, so the next little segment I'm going to do, I'm going to call it Yarns and Acquisitions. And I'm just going to show you the yarn that I bought or if I bought any little gadgets and things like that. So I have quite a few things to show this week. You know, being a new knitter, I've purchased a few different tools and I have hand-dyed yarn this week, which is really exciting because last week I was talking about how I've never even seen it. Well, I bought quite a few. So I think I will show the yarn that I bought. I'll start with I'll start with the Knit Picks order that I got. So I got an order from Knit Picks. I've never ordered any, anything from them before. I'll show you the yarn that I got. I love these colours. They're so cute. Um, so this is the Felici Jamboree. So that's a self-striping yarn. It's fingering weight, 75 uh, superwash merino and 25% nylon. And it's really nice and soft. And I'm gonna make myself socks out of these. And yeah, so that color is called Jamboree. And this one's called Limeade. I love this color too. 
also if I have any trouble focusing on on things this week I will um, just insert like a photo or a clip just because the camera that I'm filming on it's just literally me looking down the, the lens I don't have like a display to actually see what I'm doing so I apologize for that but yeah I think these were maybe like four or five dollars each I think they were on sale but I will definitely buy them again so I got two of, two of each of those and I'll make myself socks in those and I got sock blockers and I got these in all three sizes so this is the the large and I have small and medium I the reason I got three I wasn't sure what size I was going to need and I figure if I make socks for other people in the future that's just handy to have. Also, um, in my order from Mythix, I got this yarn ball winder. I think it's fine. I don't see any problems with it. It does kind of squeak like that, but who cares about that? Um, so they're the things I ordered, but I got something else in my order, which I didn't order and I didn't pay for, but I'm not going to tell anyone. But, um, this. The Yarn Swift. So, yeah. I'm not sure why that was in my order. I didn't pay for it and I didn't order it. But, yeah, I'm happy it's there. Uh, I'm just going to have a drink. Again, my printer is making noises when I'm filming, so no. And there's the train. Um, so yeah, I'll keep going with my yarn and acquisitions. So the first hand dyed yarn I received, and I've ordered and received, is from Saltwater Yarns in Western Australia. And this one is called Tropical Island. And it's the 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Just look at these colors. I love these colors so much. Pretty much all my favourite colours in one, one stain. And I do like a lot of white as well. It's really nice and soft. I love pink, I love turquoise and teal. So I'm not sure, not sure what I'm going to make out of this. I'll just, yeah, think about it. But um, yeah, I'll link the store down below it's a website I don't think she's on Etsy um, and I believe her name is Beck and she has a great Instagram too really good like she makes some really nice things she always has her her yarn on display so what also came with that is her oh she, the thing I like about the hand hand dye is, is they send you a little note too which with each order which I think is really Cute. Yeah, here's her details here. I'll just put that. Put that there. You can see that. Cute card. And it also came with a packet of tea. And this is so cute. Wasn't expecting this. A little seahorse. Progress Keeper. So yeah, that was my first first ever hand dyed yarn, so I'm really excited about that. And I love her colorways, they're just, they're awesome. And what's so great about them is when you go onto the website and there'll be like a little inspiration picture of, you know, the reason behind or the ideas behind the colorways, which I really like. 
Um, I think she's got ones like snorkeling and glass bottom boat, all kind of really cool Australian, Australian inspired colorways, which is really nice. Um, and then I got this off of Etsy. I'll just show you how it comes because I just love the way she's packaged this stuff, this one. So I'll just, this is Tonya. And she writes a nice little note as well to thank to thank you for your purchase. It's really nice. She is really great with communicating. Thanks you thanks you for your reviews and everything like that. And just beautiful colours as well. And also in the package she sends um little why is my mind gone blank? Stitch markers, that's it. <laughs> this one, oh my god, it's fantastic. I just love these colours. This is definitely going to be a shawl. I'm definitely making this into a shawl. I think I'm going to... I've never made a shawl before, so I think I'm going to try the Rainer shawl, which is on Etsy, and I think it's it's a free pattern. When you search for shawls on Etsy on Ravelry, it's like the number two... second most popular one up there. So that's the one I'm going to try. Um... I'm not sure what this colorway is called. So this one is 75% wool, 20% bamboo, and 5% silk. Very nice. I also ordered from her a lace weight, and it's the same kind of color colorway. Eventually I will delve into lace. But yeah, just beautiful colours. Oh, what's this one? This is 100% blue faced by, um, I don't, it's BFL, I'd say that. I don't even know how to pronounce that as an awful. So yeah, there's that one. Uh, on Etsy as well, and I'll link all this down below. The next one is Meredith Fiberco on Etsy. And this colorway is called Shindig. And this is Superwash Merino. I bought this because I just love the colors. Now these, these ones, um, I don't know what you call this but it's like the yarn is twisted differently if i pair it to say this one that's seems quite flat whereas this one is i don't even know how to describe it yeah so it's a different kind of effect feels slightly different as well again i don't know what i want to make I think, I think with the hand dyed yarn that I buy, I'd like to save them for, you know, more special projects. I don't want to just make socks out of them. I don't know if I could do that. Maybe I'll get there eventually. And then another one from Meredith Fiberco. This one's called Glomp. Again, what about the colours? And it's that same... Twisted yarn. If you know what that's called, let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. I feel so stupid not <laughs> knowing any of this stuff. So yeah, beautiful. Um, so it's funny how much you can, you know, learn and 
experience in two weeks since I did the last one. I'd never even seen hand dyed yarn in person and now I have quite a few skeins of my own. But also I did some dyeing of yarn as well, which is really exciting. Um, before I show you though, so basically the reason I wanted to have a go at dyeing my own yarn, not because I want to sell it or anything like that, just for my own personal use. Um, like I love hand dyed yarn, but it is very expensive and I don't really always have the funds to buy it. So I thought maybe if I dye my own yarn, then it would be a little bit cheaper. And it is actually really fun. So to get information to get me started, I watched a tutorial by Hugh Loco and she just kind of, the, the videos I watched were just kind of the basics, how to kind of set up and um, dye in the like stock pots. So that's what I did. I just went to Lynn Craft and I bought RIT dye, R-I-T dye, and that's just the cheap fabric dye and then I also bought um, just some wool in a ball so I think it was um, the, like a baby uh, merino uh, wool so I bought that and basically what I did is I just unwound it and I just kind of wrapped it around my arm and that was quite a good arm workout doing that until it was kind of in like a skein like an unraveled skein shape. It's not ideal because it can get kind of twisted, but I didn't have any access to a skein and I was like, I really want to give this a go this weekend, which was last weekend I did this. And so I just thought, I'll just try this, get me started. And so I just um, bought the baby yarn and kind of made it into a skein by hand. And here are the results. So I got these, these tiny little, tiny little ones. So it's kind of like turquoise and I did a bit of yellow. Why is it arrow? I'm, I'm really happy actually with the way these turned out. And it's really fun to just kind of play around with colors and obviously hand dyes that do this for a living, you know, have an idea in the head and they make it happen. I was just kind of like, oh, la -da -da, whatever, and it, just hoping it turned out all right. And it did. I really like these a lot. So I have um, four of these. I think there's some. So two more of these ones. And then this darker one. Okay, so I have some more yarn, which I got from Lincraft the other day. It was two dollars for for one of these balls so this is their european collection i'm not sure why but just about every yarn from this european collection is reduced so maybe they're not selling or i'm not sure but i bought these um to make beanies out of so the blue I bought uh, four of the blue. I'm going to make a beanie for my partner Bryce, my mum's partner. And then, I don't know if you can tell, but there are, um, these are two different colour purples. So I'll do one for myself and one for my mum. And this is 70% acrylic and 30% wool. It's not soft. But it's not scratchy either. I hope it will be appropriate for a beanie. I'm not sure I've never made a beanie before. If you have any good um, like beginner beanie patterns, let me know. Because I'd be yeah, excited to get started on those. But two dollars, you know, I'm not gonna pass that up. Have a drink. Um the next little segment I want to do, I'm going to call it Netflix, and I'm probably ripping off a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of people have used this before, but I copied it from Kylie from Five Lily, which 
she's another great yarn dyer and I'll have some of her yarn on the next podcast and I'll talk a bit about her then. I really like her. But um, she mentioned Netflix on her Facebook page. So um, I'm going to use that. So when I'm knitting, I like to just have my tablet there and my headphones on and I just knit away and watch Netflix. And the shows that I'm, well, I watched this week, I watched Stranger Things. Love that show so much. I watched it over two nights. And I know it's been out for quite a few months and I've been meaning to watch it. But I did, and I'm glad I did. I love the 80s. It's one of my favourite decades. I love the movies, the fashion, uh, the music. So that was yeah, really good to watch. And watching that show, I definitely got a lot of influences. Like I could kind of relate some of the stuff to other movies that I'd seen. Like it kind of reminded me of other 80s movies. It was quite a quite a bit of 80s music in there as well and I also started watching a show called 13 Reasons Why and I've nearly finished that one it's um, quite a dark show Um, it's about suicide I think it's aimed towards a teenage audience but I watched it Um, so yeah that's quite a dark kind of topic but it's just the way that they've set the show out I find is really interesting I've never kind of watched a show like that before how they well I won't give it away you can watch it if you want to but just the way the way they've set it out it's quite interesting to watch and then I thought I would talk about um the podcasts that I'm watching um so first one I want to mention is the Yarn Hoarder podcast, Amber. I love her podcast so much. Just, just to watch her sit behind that massive wall of yarn. Like, look at mine. <laughs> How like, sad that is compared to hers, but it's all good. Um, what I like about hers, I think, the most is every time I've watched it, I've learned something new. Her first episode, for example, was about soft blanks. Didn't know what a soft blank was, and so she explains that. But just her enthusiasm about knitting and yarn, and she always has so much to share, and I learn a lot from watching her podcast. So yeah, I really enjoy her podcast. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Legacy Knits, uh, Sue and Chelsea love them so much they're just really fun to watch I should mention too that I'm like I am really late to the podcast party I get that but I'm kind of one of those people like if a movie's five minutes in I can't watch it I I will only watch it from the beginning so I'm watching all these podcasts way back from like a year ago when they kind of first started um so yeah, I know they're probably up to, I think Sue and Chelsea probably like episode 40 something. I think I'm on episode 15, something like that. But they're just really fun to watch and just the way that they interact is, is really fun. And yeah, I learn a lot from them as well. And then of course the Grocery Girls. They weren't the first, no, the first one that I actually saw ever was the yarn hoarder and I think it had just come up in my recommended thing on YouTube and then second to that I think was the grocery girls and again who knows what episode they're up to I think they're you know way way ahead but I'm like a year behind but I I just can't go jump to the ones that are happening now I really I like to see how things have progressed. I don't want to just jump straight in. I want to go back to the beginning and watch it all like that. So yeah, um, what else? Oh, an Australian podcast that I found this week. Um, Laura from Lola Star Creates. Really, really great podcast. She, her colour palette, the colours that she chooses are really fantastic. And uh, the projects that she shows too are just just beautiful so I'm definitely looking forward to 
more of her podcast. And I only watched one this week. I think she got to episode eight, but I'm going to go back and watch the earlier ones as well. But I love seeing Australian podcasters and what they're using and what they're making. So I think that's really exciting. Um, I'm going to stop doing that. That, that noise is annoying. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's all I have to talk about today. I'll just have a look down here. Yeah, I showed everything. So yeah, so yeah, because it's it's been two weeks since the first one. Maybe I'll do the next one in two weeks. But if I've finished a few items, then I will do one sooner. I also have coming this week. Um, a Chiaogu needle set, which I'm so excited to get. I'm so sick of using the crappy needles from Spotlight. They're just awful to use. And then every time you start a new project, having to go out and spend, you know, $8 on new needles when you just get the set and then I've just got it all there. No excuses, can get straight into it. So that'll be coming this week. So then hopefully, by the next podcast, I would have cast on with this one, this yarn, and the Brenna shawl, I hope. I really, I never thought I'd be making a shawl, but just watching podcasters and just the beautiful shawls that they come up with and the amazing colours, it's, it's incredible. And I feel like getting into knitting, for me, my clothing, it's pretty pretty plain like I wear the same kind of colors but with knitting I am drawn to crazy colors and I feel like it's really like opening up my mind a little bit to color and I definitely want to incorporate that into my wardrobe and have more like a